Hey guys, it's Jessica here. And can you guys believe that it's March already? We are already worn forth throughout 2023. March is a beautiful month because it not only marks as the beginning of spring in Korea, but also it is the time of the year where we celebrate the International Women's Month. And specifically today, March 8th, is the International Women's Day, where women and womanhood are celebrated around the world. And while some may be questioning this celebration, it is not a hidden fact that women throughout the history have suffered and struggled to fight for equality. So celebrating Women's Month is a way to acknowledge that sad history and reality, and it also creates important discussions on how far we are in terms of fighting for that journey of equality. So that's why today I decided to make a video on the brief and general history of women of the Philippines. So typically in the Philippines, when we say Filipina, the first thing that comes to mind is the Mahinhin or the Makabasag Pingat na Marie Clara which means very meek, quiet, and gentle. And obviously, those kind of descriptions does not do it justice to actually describe the Filipina. So to understand more, we do have to go back to the pre-colonial era of the Philippines. So while there are not many information or resources on the pre-colonial Philippines to really grasp the past, due to the burning of the cultural artifacts that occurred during the Spanish invasion, almost all remaining records of history reported pretty much the same thing. So it is said that before the Spanish invaded the Philippines, there had been a long tradition of how Filipino indigenous women played an important role in the community. More commonly known as the Babaylans in the Visayas or the Catalonas in the Tagalog region, they are the mystical healers, often women, whose power is to connect and act as intermediaries between the spiritual and material worlds. And that very power they have as the mystical healers actually gave them the social and political power in the community. So the Babaylans and Catalonans not only acted as a healer, but they were also the community's priestesses, sages, and warriors. And yes, when I mean warriors, they really fight and wield weapons to defend their land. And now you might be wondering what about like the ordinary women uh, during the pre-colonial era, aside from those who were by violence, how were their reputation like? So I'm going to be taking the reference from the book called The Pre-Colonial Filipina by Mary John Manazan, who enumerated the following observations during this period. So it was reported that during the pre-colonial Philippines, Filipino women were highly respected, they could own their properties, and they could also become the chieftains in the absence of male heirs. And this is also what I found interesting, which is they can also give names to their children, which was a very crucial act back then. So based on the description of Baybaylan and also the descriptions of women that were observed in this book, we can already tell and observe the equal footing that men and women had during the time. So as you can notice during the pre-colonial era, the description of women it was really different from the typical the Maria Clara definition of a Filipino woman. So now, when did that concept start? Yes, it started during the Spanish occupation period. So when the Spaniards learned and witnessed the Babaylans when they first landed in the Philippines, it actually threatened them and the religion that they carry. So what they did was force these people to abandon their ritual practices. So then by Bailans were driven to the mountains and were branded as witches. And then that's when the Spaniards pushed the Maria Clara concept as the ideal Filipina woman, which are, you know the descriptions, submissive, very religious, obedient. So their fall from being one of the most powerful and respected groups of society in the Philippines during the pre-colonial era to someone who was feared and despised represents the drastic changes that overwhelmed the whole pre-colonial Filipino society. And as the Spanish occupation, which was quite long, went on, the image of the woman being the subordinate was instilled and the men rising as the dominant gender. So overall, it created a patriarchal society that has prevailed and was surpassed on to the next generations. And as Spanish were the ones who controlled the Catholic Church of the Philippines, women were no longer allowed to hold high positions and participate in political activities. But although some women were able to attend some vocational schools, most were not given the opportunity for education because the church and the government believed that women should just stay at home. Now fast forward to the American occupation period when the Thomasites, who were the group of teachers who were sent 
from the states to the Philippines in 1901. They opened up schools in the Philippines to all genders. And this is a time when there had been some visible changes happening in terms of women's position in society as they finally got the chance to get proper education. So by the time of the American occupation, so during the 1940s, a significant number of Filipino women had become educated. These women joined and organized other women to fight for their right to suffrage. And in 1937, they were finally granted the right to vote. And then World War II takes place and the Japanese occupation begins. So when the Japanese came to the Philippines, two completely opposite circumstances happened to Filipino women. First of all, more than 1,000 Filipino women were enslaved as sexual slavery hostages, which we know today as the comfort women. And meanwhile, some women also fought alongside men. So some of the most notable Filipino women who fought for their country in the history include Gregoria, the wife of Andres Bonifacio and also the mother of the Philippine Revolution. And then Tandang Sora, the grand woman of the revolution who provided a safe refuge and medical support for the wounded revolutionaries. And also the women of Malolos who participated in a peaceful movement for educational reforms in the country. And we also can't forget Nieves Fernandez, a school teacher who actually killed more than 200 Japanese soldiers to protect her students and so much more. And now we're moving on to the Commonwealth era. So starting from the stance of women in terms of politics, the capability of women to vote and being eligible to run for public office strengthened even more during the Commonwealth period. Thanks to the Act Number no. 4112 approved by then President Manuel Quezon, which acknowledged their presence and rights. So Carmen Planas is the then UP law student who became the first woman to be elected to any public office in the Philippines. She was elected as the counselor of Manila in 1937 and it all started after she made an eloquent speech in front of the youth rally. The country also had two women presidents and there are also plenty of female legislators present in the Senate and the House of Representatives. And in terms of justice, the Philippines also has an ample number of laws that address abuse and violence against women to ensure their protection. To name a few, there is the Republic Act of Number 9262 or the Anti-Violence Women and Their Children Act of 2004. And there's also the Anti-Rape Law of 1997 and the Quezon City's Anti-Catcalling Ordinance. And in terms of workforce or economy, it is still the men who dominate the industry. But despite that fact, it is still undeniable how many companies also prefer hiring female employees because of their professionalism and work ethics. So in fact, some of the leading companies in the Philippines today are also led by female business executives. And now more and more Filipino entrepreneurs start building their brands from scratch, becoming a successful businesswoman. By the way, guys, every time I film a talking video, I feel like, like it becomes a nighttime because I always film with natural light. So like, it's so funny because it seems like, like I've been filming this for like the whole day. But yeah, I just turned the lights on. So anyway, going down to the conclusion from the pre-colonial era of the Philippines till to modern day, Filipino women have faced challenges, struggles, and discrimination, but they've also asserted their agency and fought for their rights. So I think it is safe to say that the history of Filipino women is a story of resilience, courage, and empowerment. So as we celebrate the International Women's Month and Day today, let us honor the women who have paved the way for the future generations and who is also continuing to inspire us today. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!